Thanks for joining us for CBN News Today. I'm Ephraim Graham. Public health officials in New York City are urging calm in the wake of news a doctor there is battling Ebola at the same time. World health officials are raising grave concerns about the international epidemic. The official number of cases is nearing 10,000, but it's believed the actual number is much higher. Heather Sells has the latest. The newest Ebola patient in the U.S. recently returned from West Africa, where he treated Ebola patients as a member of Doctors Without Borders. On Thursday, Dr. Craig Spencer was rushed to a designated Ebola center in Manhattan after reporting a fever and diarrhea. We've been preparing for months for the threat posed by Ebola. We have clear and strong protocols which are being scrupulously followed. A team of disease detectives are now tracing Spencer's movement since he returned from Africa one week ago. Before his diagnosis, he rode the subway, went bowling, and stopped in a restaurant. Health officials have sealed off Spencer's apartment and quarantined his fiance and two friends. But they emphasize that Dr. Spencer was not contagious until he became sick. I think that the thing to make clear is that the first time that this patient had fever was today, and, it's, and fever is the typical sign of a person uh, developing contagious Ebola. Meanwhile, new numbers from the World Health Organization indicate the current Ebola outbreak is the worst ever. At least 4,800 people have already died from the virus, and at least 9,900 cases have been recorded. But the WHO says the true numbers may be three times higher. Ebola has hit Liberia the hardest, with 4,600 reported cases and 2,700 deaths. And now, news that more than half the treatment beds in the capital are empty. It's an unintended consequence of the government order to cremate all the bodies of Ebola victims. The order runs so contrary to Liberian custom, however, that even more people are keeping their sick loved ones at home. Heather Sells, CBN News. New York City police are working to figure out what motivated a man to attack a group of rookie police officers with a hatchet Thursday afternoon. Police shot and killed the suspect. Fox News report his reports his name is Zale Thompson, and he could have a connection to a terrorist organization based on pictures posted to his Facebook page. Unprovoked and not speaking a word, the male then swung at one of the officers with the hatchet, striking his right arm. After striking that officer, the suspect continued swinging the hatchet, striking a second officer in the head, causing him to fall to the sidewalk. Two officers were seriously hurt during the attack. Disturbing new video showing the attack on Canada's parliament this week. It begins with the crowd running away as the gunman pulls up and jumps out of his car carrying a rifle. Then, the moment he races inside the building, sending lawmakers scrambling for cover. The attacker, 32-year-old Michael Zihoff Bebo, was a devout Muslim with frequent run-ins with police. Although the motive of the attack is not clear, Canadian authorities say he was angry he had not gotten a passport to go to Syria. Canada's prime minister says his nation will not be intimidated. We see across the world uh, increasing places where the planet is descending into savagery. We will we'll be vigilant, but we will not run scared. We will be prudent, but we will not panic. And as for the business of government, well, here we are in our seats, in our chamber, in the very heart of our democracy and our work. Bebo had also made several visits to the U.S. most recently last year when authorities say he had already become radicalized. The Associated Press is facing some heat for its offensive headline following Thursday's terrorist attack in Jerusalem. The initial one read, Israeli police shoot man in East Jerusalem and makes no mention of the shooting being, being in response to a terrorist attack. After repeated complaints, it was changed to car slams into East Jerusalem train station. Finally, it was changed to Palestinian kills baby at Jerusalem station. But there are still calls for the Associated Press to identify who's responsible for the attack and to take action. Meanwhile, the terrorist responsible for the attack is hailed as a mar martyr on Fatah's Facebook page, as you just saw. And in the past, Secretary of State John Kerry has called Fatah an ironclad peace partner. 
a setback for Tea Party groups suing the IRS for delaying its applications for tax-exempt status. A federal judge dismissed two lawsuits by conservative groups against the IRS and IRS officials who took part in the scandal. The judge ruled the agency had ended its targeting of specific groups, so the suit has no basis. He said his ruling is based on procedural grounds, not the merits of the case. The American Center for Law and Justice, which represents the group, said it plans to appeal. The IRS has admitted it held up applications for groups with words like Tea Party or Liberty in their, na in their names. The scandal has led to several criminal and congressional investigations. Wasteful government spending is just as out of control as ever. A new report exposes billions of dollars of taxpayer money being tossed around for outrageous expenses. Like this, $856,000 to put mountain lions on a treadmill, $171,000 to study the connection between gambling monkeys and the secrets of free will, or a whopping $1 billion for the Pentagon to destroy $16 billion in unused ammunition. John Jessup has more of the shocking details. This Congress may be the least productive in 60 years, with fewer laws passed than any other in a half century, but its lack of productivity is no match for its prolific, wasteful spending. Until you actually reduce the size and scope of the federal government, waste will continue to happen. Senator Tom Coburn, one of Congress's most ardent crusaders against pork, found 100 projects totaling $25 billion in unnecessary spending. The latest edition of his annual waste book highlights example after example of abuse, like $10,000 to watch grass grow at a Florida reserve, or $19 million in paid vacations for government workers, about a third of whom were placed on administrative leave for disciplinary reasons. That includes an EPA employee who was caught looking at porn on his government computer for hours on end for the past four years, and the list goes on. A whopping $350 million for a NASA launch pad tower that was mothballed immediately because the rockets it was designed to test were scrapped years ago. When it comes to fighting terrorism, no amount of money can be wasted, right? Well, try this. The State Department used part of its $3 million counterterrorism communications budget to debate terrorists on Twitter. And finally, our personal favorite, $387,000 to measure the effects of Swedish massage on 18 lucky New Zealand white rabbits. Emily Goff, a policy analyst at the Heritage Foundation, says these examples highlight Washington's failure of leadership. The first degree of responsibility lies with Congress because they are authorizing spending on these programs. And then you also have to blame the administration, all the federal agencies that are not, limit, that are not, not focusing their limited re federal resources on truly national priorities. Goff proposes the creation of a government waste reduction commission authorized to find waste and cut out abuse. Until we do, she says, we compromise America's future. Our debt has reached $17.9 trillion, a number that most Americans, I can hardly even fathom. And we're asking future generations, our children and grandchildren, to pay for that debt. Um, and I think that uh, Congress, th th this waste book really highlights the need to get our debt and deficit under control. This is Senator Coburn's fifth annual waste book. In it, he acknowledges Washington may never change, but he also urges voters to know you always have the last word. John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. European Union leaders agreed today to cut greenhouse gas emissions at least 40 percent by 2030. That comes as well-known meteorologist John Coleman says there's no scientific evidence for man-made climate change. The co-founder of the Weather Channel says what little evidence there is for rising temperatures indicates they come from nature. He writes, I have studied this topic seriously for years. It has become a political and environment agenda item. But the science is not valid. There is no significant man-made global warming at this time. There has been none in the past, and there is no reason to fear any in the future. U.S. lawmakers are introducing legislation to stop former Nazis from receiving Social Security payments. This comes after an Associated Press investigation exposed dozens of former Nazis who lied about their past and were forced to leave the U.S. But they've been receiving millions of dollars in U.S. government payments for years. Julie Stahl has that story. Jacob Denzinger is a suspected Nazi war criminal. He's living out a comfortable retirement in Croatia, 
courtesy of U.S. taxpayers. According to a two-year investigation by the Associated Press, Denzinger is one of dozens of suspected Nazi war criminals and SS guards who collected millions of dollars in Social Security payments after leaving the U.S. Denzinger, who wouldn't talk to the AP, patrolled the concentration camp in Auschwitz, Poland. He immigrated to the U.S. after World War II and, like many others, lied about his Nazi past. Denzinger owned a business in Akron, Ohio, and sold it when he left for West Germany in 1989 after the Office for Special Investigations uncovered his Nazi past. The United States of America, the country that was one of the two principal leaders in leading the fight against the Nazis, is rewarding these perpetrators by paying them money and pension. Many former Nazis blended into America, raised families, and paid their taxes. It's true that they worked, but it's also true that they lied about who they were. The Social Security payments of up to $1,500 a month flowed through a legal loophole that the U.S. Justice Department used to persuade suspected Nazis to leave the U.S. This loophole needs to be closed. I will work hard to close it, and uh, not only now, but in the future. In a Catholic cemetery in Croatia, Denzinger, who is 90, has already put up his tombstone. His epitaph? Proud that we had you, happy that we were with you, eternally sad that we lost you. Julie Stahl, CBN News. Coming up is Earth at the Center of the Universe, the controversial new documentary that targets the very heart of evolutionary theory. A new documentary is so controversial, scientists and even people in the movie are condemning it before they've had the chance to even see it. Paul Strand talked to the even more controversial executive producer to find out why the film is causing such outrage and why if people see it and believe it, it'll have the effect of literally putting Earth back at the center of the universe. All these things are the principle goes to the very edges of the vast universe and to the latest science to present what its makers believe is solid evidence the whole universe is aligned with and circling around Earth and its Milky Way galaxy. As if the galaxies preferred to lie at some periodic spacing out from the Earth. This is sort of like saying that our galaxy is somewhere near the center of the universe, and when you look at the galaxies arrayed all around us, they're on sort of like giant um, shells. If you're a believer in the Big Bang, you believe that there's going to be this smooth explosion that's not going to have any distinguishing features, and it's not going to have any center. So if you find a center in that big mass, well, that means somebody had to make it that way. There's a designer behind it. Earth at the center of the cosmos was accepted dogma till Copernicus in the 1500s suggested everything isn't moving around Earth. On that Copernican principle, most of the modern science has formed that says Earth is just one more meaningless moving orb among trillions in a purposeless, unplanned universe. By questioning that Copernican principle, this new documentary is outraging some scientists, even some who are in the film, like physicist Lawrence Krauss. In the online magazine Slate, he's written, the best thing we can all do when faced by nonsense like that, or equivalent silliness promoted by biblical fundamentalists, who claim that science supports a literal interpretation of the Bible, is to ignore it in public forums and not shine any light on the authors of this trash. But scientists in the film admit their own theories about how the universe works don't come close to fitting with the latest data. However, in cosmology, we're off by a factor of 10 to the 120. That is one with 120 zeros after it. This is the largest mismatch between theory and experiment in the history of science. In the principle, Krauss describes a radiation permeating the whole universe. The cosmic microwave background is the afterglow of the Big Bang. The only source of radiation we've ever discovered that comes to us from all directions of the sky. The principal's executive producer says three recent probes of this show the same proof that the universe and its galaxies are arrayed around Earth and the Milky Way. If all of the radiation which comes from everywhere in the universe, there's no place we don't see it, and it's all coming toward us and aligned with us like this, you know, on a 23 and a half degree tilt and with our equator, the Earth is like a little pea compared to like the Milky Way. You know, what, what is this universe doing being aligned with this little pea? But that's what they found three times in 20 years. 
On the same day Krauss denounced the film, so did its narrator Kate Mulgrew, the famed Captain Janeway of Star Trek Voyager. She said on her Facebook fan page, I was a voice for hire, and a misinformed one at that. But in this promo material for The Principal, Mulgrew spoke of totally getting its content before she did her narration. I have to fully understand it. I have to separate it out. Do you know it has to make perfect sense to me? As the film prepares for its first public showing this weekend, Bob Sungenis has also had to beat back accusations by physicist Krauss and others that he's an anti-Semite and Holocaust denier. It's been blown up so out of proportion. As a matter of fact, I had to make a statement, a public statement, and I made it two, sta two separate statements. I believe in the Holocaust, you know, I love the Jewish people, I'm not an anti-Semite, all this stuff. His supporters say Sungenis is the victim of made-up stories and half-truths. The principal's creators suspect the attacks were a coordinated campaign to keep people from concentrating on the evidence in the film that there is provable design in the universe and Earth's at the center of it. Like what scientists found with the 2005 Sloan Digital Sky Survey of all the visible cosmos. As far out as we could see in the universe, the galaxies were aligned in concentric spheres around, guess what? Earth, <laughs> or our galaxy. The film's makers are first testing to see if the principal might make it as a theatrical release before they'll put it on DVD and online. Paul Strand, CBN News. Up next, rumors of wars. We've got an inside look at the new Christian film about end times prophecy. A new end times action thriller may be coming to a church near you. It's called Rumors of Wars and it'll be simulcast in hundreds of churches next week. Our own Wendy Griffith had the chance to play an anchor woman who helps to set the stage for this unfolding drama. Take a look. We have breaking news of a bombing on American soil. An explosion went off just moments ago at a military base outside of Chicago. We're told the blast came from a single explosive on the first floor of the mess hall. It seems that the impact was through the roof. As the bad time, news spills from the TV the set, rumors of war centers around the story of Roxy, an aspiring college journalist who investigates end time prophecies for a term paper. Her findings proved to be more than anyone mean, bargained uh, for. I know this is hard for you, and I know you're looking for answers. I... Just looking for the truth. Rumors of wars then catapults you years into the future, where Roxy's diary is discovered in the rubble of a post-apocalyptic society. The book finds its way into the hands of an officer in the New World Army who is torn between duty and truth. Specific. You look at me, you filthy yeah. Christian. And you get to see this guy that's struggling to fulfill his duties with the Alliance and being such a, you know, full-hearted soldier and, and, and doing what he's told and, and fighting for what he believes in, but at the same time being conflicted with his own morals. I pray that God would send me the exact perfect actor for every role, and that's exactly what he did. Yes. This is okay. the dream Dude. cast for a faith-based film. Zern Global is in relentless pursuit of perfection. Other famous faces include I Eric Roberts, Brad Stein, Jackie Velasquez. We gotta go. And Matt Powell of Third Day, who makes his big screen debut in Rumors of Wars. I've met a lot of um, people who are, in, who are in Hollywood and acting in films and TV, and, and they always say that they want to be singers, and, and you know, a lot of times singers want to be actors. Joining us, we want to bring you up to date on a deadly explosion that went off inside a shopping mall outside of Miami, Florida last night. It happened- Producers say Rumors of Wars promises to entertain, but more importantly, provides a great way to discuss the Bible and the end times with unsafe friends. You will hear of wars, and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Rumors of wars will be simulcast for free in hundreds of churches between October 29th and November 2nd. If you'd like to bring the movie to your church or venue, you can find more about rumors of wars at our website. We've got more information, cbnnews.com. Well, the weekend is here, and you may be looking for a little family-friendly entertainment. Here with our regular movie review is Bob Walaszewski from Plugged In Online. That's the entertainment review department at Focus on the Family. Bob, there is a new faith-based film hitting theaters. It's called 23 Blast. Tell us about it. 
Yeah, I think this is a fine option for uh, families this weekend. We give it a four out of five for family friendliness. It's based on the true story of Travis Freeman, uh, a talented young football player who went blind because of bacterial meningitis. And uh, of course, he, he thinks his life is over. He's lost his girlfriend. He can't play football anymore. He's down and out until his former football coach comes up and says, I think you can still play. And all of a sudden, he goes from being down to thinking, well, to having hope. And a very inspiring film, watching this young man learn to overcome the blindness adversity and play a little bit of football. Beautiful. Now, I understand you had the opportunity to see part of the new Exodus movie. It's not being released until December, but what's your take so far? Well, I know um, families of faith are interested in this one uh, coming out at the Christmas season. Uh, they're wondering, is this another Noah? Well, again, I've only seen 41 minutes of the entire film, but privileged to be invited to see different clips of the film. And so far, I would say, so far, so good. I feel that Ridley Scott has taken the pains uh, to try to be as accurate as he possibly can. Um, of course, there'll be a few liberties. Uh, I noticed a potential one didn't have it quite in context. Christian Bale as Moses is working for me, uh, feeling like they're trying to be accurate. That's working for me. I will say this. It looks like it's knocking up against the edge of an R rating. It could possibly get that. It hasn't been rated yet, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, I hope it comes in at a PG-13. Um, but because we're killing off a lot of Egyptians and there's a, a lot of deaths, uh, it's definitely uh, going to be a little bit on the violent side, but accurate, that's the big question mark. I think they're working toward that. We'll see when we see the full film and they tell us we will get to see the full film in advance. Just haven't seen it yet. All right. Great to have that insight. Thank you, Bob. You bet. And that's going to do it for CBN News today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous Friday and a wonderful weekend.